Welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison. We'll be talking sports and life. Got professional basketball player Maurice Creek with us today. Um, before we left off, man, we was talking about, you know, your whole college experience. And, you know what I mean? Being an elite player, man, you obviously killed, you know, Indiana and George Washington. But then, you know, obviously as athletes, our dream is to play on the next level. So now you're done with your college career. What was your next step? What was that process like getting ready for the draft, NBA, and then, you know, playing, you know, professional basketball? What was that process like for you off at, at the college? Man, it was it was tough for me. Um, I definitely thought uh, I was going to get drafted, but I, I happened to not get drafted. Um, I only had one um, good combine, like not combine, but good workout. It was for the Wizards. You know, I thought I, I did a really good job, you know, shooting the ball really well, running through the plays and stuff like that. They happened to pick Jordan Clarkson, and they ended up trading their pick that year. So, you know, when you when you got dreams of going to the NBA and it don't pan out, you know, you kind of upset and kind of, you know, say you was down. But, you know, I picked my head up and I just went to the overseas route of everything. And I played in some – pretty good spot you know what i mean my uh my rookie year i was in the netherlands and uh mm-hmm. you know i've been playing overseas this would have been my eighth year you know so i had I finished out where i was where i was at right. um but you know i played in some pretty good spots and i learned a lot you know i learned the good and the bad and the ugly right. of everything right. you know what i mean and uh is it's a it's what people don't see you know what i mean it's you when you're overseas, you gotta learn a lot about yourself. You gotta learn a lot. You know, what I mean, you don't have your family there no more. You gotta learn how to be a, a major, a, a major adult now. You know what I mean? You gotta learn how to spend your money. You gotta learn how to cook, clean. You know what I mean? It's just not playing basketball anymore. And, and you know what I'm saying? You got food waiting on you at the house when you when you right. finish and. Or you, you you ain't doing homework no more. You know what right. I mean? You really got. Two practices a day now. You got uh, <laughs> you what? You got um, you gotta go to all these events, and it ain't up to you if you want to go to the event or not. You have to go because it's a part of your contract. You gotta mm-hmm. be able to talk to people. You gotta be able to, you know, what I'm saying, take all these pictures, sign all these autographs and stuff like that. So, you know, when I'm, I watch the kids today. You know, every kid thinks they're going to the NBA, like, right. but it's only 400 spots in the NBA. You know what Facts. I mean? It's, Facts. It's, it's 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 so little for millions of people who got that dream. You know what I right. mean? So now everybody's kind of figuring out that overseas is kind of the way. But my question to the kids is: Is they ready? You know what I mean? Facts. Because Facts. you know what I mean. So it's not it's not as easy as it seems. You know what I'm saying? A lot of thing, a lot of people that I talked to over my past years kind of figured that out. You know what I'm saying? But you know, as a mentor, they were supposed to already know that before they went through, but you know, they didn't. And they right. we talk about that stuff all the time. Like, Dang, I wish I would have known how this was before I went out there, or I wish Thanks. I would have talked with somebody that knew the game before I um before I had to go through the game and stuff like that. So right. You know, for me, I I was fortunate enough to be around people who already knew the game. Right. And they told me all this. They told me like how it's not easy and how you know these a lot of these uh, these um teams is overseas. They go off of percentages now. They don't go off of what how many points you score or what you do on the court. If you, it's about percentages and wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a total, it's a total difference than uh, the than, um, American way. Absolutely. I tell, I tell people all the time, man, people ask me the question all the time. How was overseas? Like, you should write a book about the overseas. Like, I said, look here, man. Yeah, I don't know. Now, yeah, y'all say, oh, you get tax-free money. You get to travel the world. Look here, man. Like you said, you over there with no family, nobody, facing in a whole different world. On your own, speaking different languages, different foods. I played in places where the food wasn't that great. And you got to figure it out. Like you yeah. said, you, you come from, from practice, just practice for two and a half, three hours. So you got to come back home. And then now you got to figure out how to eat food. You got to eat. You know what I mean? All that yeah. whole, every, everything like that. Then like you said, you got a family, you miss your family. Then don't, don't forget about how sometimes they don't want to pay you on time. 
And now you got to sit oh, and wait yeah. for months, man. I, <laughs> and then they still expect you to practice and play at a high level or practice and play at all, and you're not yeah. getting paid. You know what I mean? So they don't see that side. They don't, they don't see nope. they don't see people talking trash to you or people you know, at the games or trying to get at you when you're in the street. They don't see that side, though. <laughs> yeah, nah, man. It's, it's a whole new ballgame when you cross that water. And they know you're an American, too, so it's like, they already feel as if, oh, the, every American that comes across our country think we're they're better than us. So now mm-hmm. they try to find their ways of how of how can they, how can we utilize what we got to be better than them? So right, it's right. it's tough. It's tough. It really is like, man, like I know, like when I have kids and I, they ask me that question, they'll be they'll be well prepared because I just tell them like. You know, it's a it's a whole new ball game. It's right. Basically, right. really life. You know what I'm saying? It's your life and theirs, and you know what I'm right. saying. And they don't care. Not even the people that you think are like American and stuff like that. They want your spot just as much as you know what I'm saying as anybody because they gotta feed their family at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's. it's- Make the right choice. But think first. In this thing called life, we take so many gambles. Some are good ones, and others are not. We have dreams and goals. Some of them require us to work our butts off and believe like never before in order for our dreams or goals to happen. Some dreams or goals require us to sacrifice or take a leap of faith, not knowing the outcome. Taking a gamble can be a scary thing, I took so many gambles in my life. Some I won, and some I lost. I wasn't just gambling with money. I gambled with my family, my career, my freedom, and reputation. The question is, was it worth it? Welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison. We'll be talking sports and life. We've got professional basketball player Maurice Creek with us today. Um, and before we left off, man, we was talking about, you know, your whole college experience. And, you know what I mean? Being an elite player, man, you obviously killed, you know, Indiana and George Washington. But then, you know, obviously as athletes, our dream is to play on the next level. So now you're done with your college career. What was your next step? What was that process like getting ready for the draft, NBA, and then, you know, playing, you know, professional basketball. What was that process like for you off at at the college? Man, it was it was tough for me. Um I definitely thought uh I was gonna get drafted, but I, I happened to not get drafted. Um I only had one um good combine, like not combine but good workout. It was for the Wizards. You know, I thought I, I did a really good job, you know, shooting the ball really well, running through the plays and stuff like that. They happened to pick Jordan Clarkson and they end up trading their pick that year. So, you know, when you when you got dreams of going to the NBA and it don't pan out, you know, you kind of upset and kind of, you know, say you were down. But you know, I picked my head up and I just went to the overseas route of everything, and I played in some pretty good spots. You know, what I mean, my uh my rookie year I was in the Netherlands, and I mm-hmm. you know I've been playing overseas. This would have been my eighth year. You know, had I just finished out where I was where I was at, right. um, but you know, I played in some pretty good spots and I learned a lot. You know, I learned the good and the bad and the ugly right. of everything. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, is it's a it's what people don't see. You know what I mean? It's you when you're overseas, you got to learn a lot about yourself. You got to learn a lot. You know, what I mean, you don't have your family there no more. You got to learn how to be a, a major, a, a major adult now. You know what I mean? You got to learn how to spend your money. You got to learn how to cook, clean. You know what I mean? It's just not playing basketball anymore. And, and you know what I'm saying? You got food waiting on you at the house when you, when you right. finish, and or you, you you ain't doing homework no more. You know what right. I mean? You really got two practices a day now. You got. <laughs> you what? You got um, you gotta go to all these events, and it ain't up to you if you want to go to the event or not. You have to go because it's a part of your contract. You gotta mm-hmm. be able to talk to people. 
you got to be able to, you know what I'm saying, take all these pictures, sign all these autographs and stuff like that. So, you know, when I'm, I watch the kids today, you know, every kid thinks they're going to the NBA. Like, right. but it's only 400 spots in the NBA. You know what Facts. I mean? It's, Facts. It's, 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 it's so little for millions of people who got that dream. You know what I mean? Right. So now everybody's kind of figuring out that overseas is kind of the way. But my question to the kids is, is they ready? You know what I mean? Facts. Because, Facts. you know what I mean? So it's not it's not as easy as it seems. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, thing, a lot of people that I talked to over my past years kind of figured that out. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, as a mentor, they were supposed to already know that before they went through. But, you know, they didn't. And they right. we talk about that stuff all the time. Like, Dang, I wish I would have known how this was before I went out there. Or I wish Thanks. I would have talked with somebody that knew the game before I um, before I had to go through the game and stuff like that. So, right. you know, for me, I I was fortunate enough to be around people who already knew the game. Right. And they told me all this. Stuff. They told me like how it's not easy and how you know these a lot of these. Uh, these um teams is overseas. They go off of percentages now. They don't go off of what how many points you score or what you do on the court. If you, it's about percentages and wins. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. it's, a total, it's a total difference than uh, than the um American way. Absolutely, I tell I tell people all the time, man. People ask me the question all the time. How was overseas? Like you should write a book about the overseas. Like I said, look here, man. Yeah, I don't know nothing. Yeah, yeah, I say, oh, you get tax free money. You get to travel the world. Look here, man. Like you said, you over there with no family, nobody, facing in a whole different world, on your own, speaking different languages, different foods. I played in places where the food wasn't that great. And you got to figure it out. Like you yeah. said, you, you come from, from practice, just practice for two and a half, three hours. So you got to come back home. And then now you got to figure out how to eat food. You got to eat. You know what I mean? All that yeah. whole, every, everything like that. Then like you said, if you got a family, you miss your family. Then. Don't don't forget about how sometimes they don't want to pay you on time, and now you got to sit oh, wait yeah. for months, man. I, <laughs> and then they still expect you to practice and play at a high level or practice and play at all, and you're not yeah. getting paid. You know what I mean? So they don't see that side. They don't they don't see nope. they don't see people talking trash to you or people you know at the games or trying to get at you when you're in the streets. They don't see that side though. <laughs> yeah, nah, man. It's, it's a whole new ball game when you across that water and they know you're an American too so it's like they already feel as if oh the every American that comes across our country think we're they're better than us so now mm -hmm. they try to find their ways of how of how can they how can we utilize what we got to be better than them so right it's right. it's tough it's tough it's really is like man like I know like when I have kids and I, they ask me that question they'll be They'll be well prepared because I just tell them like, you know, it's a it's a whole new ball game. It's right. Basically, really life. You know what I'm saying? It's your life and theirs, and you know what I'm right. saying. And they don't care. Not even the people that you think are like American and stuff like that. They want your spot just as much as you know what I'm saying as anybody because because they gotta feed their family at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Right. It's it's. it's State and local government exercise very important functions in the United States. They are responsible for creating state legislation which can become state law. They plan and pay for roads, run public schools, parks and libraries, provide water and utilities, and organize law enforcement elections and much more. As citizens, local government is more easily obtainable and are the means in which we communicate to the federal government. This is why it is important that we vote in more than just primary presidential elections. Midterm and local elections are just as, if not more, important for our communities and its efficiency. Resistance is local. Criminal justice reform is local. Gingerfication is local. And the right to vote is a privilege that once was not granted to all citizens because of their gender, race, or ethnicity. So today, we are all afforded this right, and we should vote at every given opportunity simply because we can. For more information on voting in poll areas, please visit the link below.
Absolutely, man. And, and speaking of the ugly, man, you just was in that whole mess over in Ukraine. Man. I played I played in Ukraine, and when I was over there, man, you know, I try to tell people, you know, I got I, had some, I got some friends over there, but like the way of life, I, I was in uh, Yuzny, and that's mm-hmm. the city. Ain't, but I go literally, I tell people, I go oh, over yeah, the whole yeah. city in 45, 45 minutes. You know what I mean? So and then, like you said, us being American, the police officers knew our car. You know what I mean? They, you know, they they take it, they, they, they ran by the mob. So every time they see the alcohol, they pulling us over, trying to give money. It, that, that whole craziness. But you you was in a mess, man, when things got ugly over there, man. I'm talking like super ugly. What was that like for you? And like, when did you know? Like, because you hear all the time, I think when even when I was over there, I know they had some drama going on in Kiev with protests and it was ugly and you just got to be careful. But when did you hear about the break of you know, war possibly happening and you still there. Like how when did it get real for you? Man, I think when we when we started hearing about everything so much, we was like, man, maybe it might come true. So everybody just wanted to be on safe and God. Like we had meetings about it all the time. When I got there, I got there late. So okay. I wasn't there like, you know, when the season start, I got there in January. You know what I mean? So I, I only played a month and two weeks of basketball in Ukraine before everything kind of transpired. So for me, it was like I wasn't really paying attention to what what it was like because I didn't already heard it. You know what I'm saying? So many years I played in Ukraine two years before. You know what right. I mean? So right. for me to play at Kiev, nothing happened. For me to play at Promete um, in uh, Kaminsky and nothing happened there, it just it was just a breakout of COVID right. um, that stopped our league. We wasn't really when I heard it was about to be war over there. I was like, you know what? I hadn't heard this before. I'm still gonna go over right. there because I'm comfortable with Ukraine. I love Ukraine. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right. Where I was most comfortable at, and then, um, you know, I was talking to my family about it every day, and we started hearing. Uh, like it was, it was getting really serious. It was like getting right. really serious. So we, you know, me and the Americans were were having meetings with the uh with the coaches and the and the president and every and all of them. They were taking it. Oh, it ain't nothing gonna happen. It ain't nothing gonna happen. You know what I mean? They was, yeah, they were, they were all like that. You know what I mean? And why we're sitting here like, well, we don't know that. You know what I mean? Right. Y'all are from here. Y'all got to stay here. We got to try to find our way back to where we were from, you know what I mean? So right, right, right. as a business person or like you brought us over here cause you want us to play at our best, but we come over here to y'all thinking that y'all got our best interest at heart. You know what right. I mean? And all honestly, we find out that it was not the case at all. It was more so like, you know what I mean? If you can't do something for me, I can't do something for you. And that's how I felt about it. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Because Everything was good, good and great when we were winning. You know what I'm saying? Like this team mm-hmm. had when I before I got there, this team ain't win, but like maybe four games. It was right. something like right. that. So right. when I got there, we had one, two games. Now it was they right. were like, you know what I'm saying? All about it. They were, you know what I'm saying, making sure everything was good, me and everything. And um they bought a new coach and we kind of dropped a couple of games, but at this time, we wasn't really worried about the games. We were worried about what the war with stuff was going to be like, you know right. what I mean? Because, at, you know what I'm saying? Like, I am I come over here to play basketball, f- make this money, send this money back to my family, right? get the bills paid back home, right? and start all over again come next year. That's That was my right. plan, you know what I'm saying? My whole right. thing. And for, like, for me... It was more so of a disrespect thing for me because of how I, how they took it because right. they were they weren't they weren't basically looking at it as okay maybe it could happen they were kind of throwing it off that it wasn't going to happen at all wow. so when it did happen they was basically expecting us they were saying that we had a plan for us to get out so when it happened everybody was gone but me like you know what I mean wow. so. People took it into an initiative to leave, right? And they they rightfully could do that because they were already there for six months. Right. You know right. what I mean? I had just got there. And the way, like, everything was going on in my family, like, 
it just couldn't happen like where I could just say, oh, I'm just going to opt out and leave. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? I got to make sure I got my letter of clearance. I got to make sure I got my um my money that they were supposed right. to, you know what I'm saying, supposedly supposed to pay me and everything like that before I leave because that everything means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Right, All that right. means a lot. If I don't get my letter of clearance, it don't matter. It don't matter where I go. I can't right. play. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's just how the things work. And if, you know what I'm saying, and money was a big factor for me because that's how I was taking care of my family. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So Absolutely. I just couldn't opt out. I didn't have anything saved. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have right. nothing just saved up to a point where I could just say, oh, all right, I'm just going to bounce out. But they right. left. Everybody left. And I was still there waiting for my next job. And talked to my agent about it. He got me a job in Qatar. And um, right when I was supposed to leave for Qatar, the vice president was supposed to pick me up from my, my apartment and take me to the, uh, to the airport. Um, that day, and while he was driving on the road, the sirens went off. Went off. Wow. So the sirens go off. You know it's wartime by then. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it was nothing that I could do. I had to go right back upstairs. Just had to sit in there and make sure nothing was happening. I had to make sure I had food in my house. Uh, run to the store real quick, grab some, grab some food, uh, cook it. I'm, I'm cooking while the lights is on because when the lights was off, you know what I mean? Like they shut the city down like it was more it was really martial law out there wow like, you know what i mean so it was no right. lights on the outside like i didn't want to make it seem like i had my lights on and nobody had their lights on because they don't you know you don't know who's like on the right. ground and, or right. like you know what i'm saying if they see lights they might shoot up the spot right 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 you know what i mean so it was just tough for me man it was it was like i i knew about the 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 business aspect of everything, but right. after going through it, I'm definitely, I definitely want to like educate the young kids, young brothers that we got right. are talented. Like don't nobody really care about you when you can't do nothing for them. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. No, absolutely, man. So how, how'd you, how did you end up officially getting home, man? Cause first of all, like I said, you're in the middle of war, man. Like you said, they, they, people getting killed, they bombing buildings. So would you ever like, like man, you just ain't know. Like you ain't know. Like you said, you stuck in the house. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. Yeah, it was like um, I was stuck there, and I would just think to myself, like, man, I might be here for a minute, or oh, is either that, or they're gonna bomb my spot, and I'm not gonna make it at all. It was some days that I was actually thinking like that, and you know, people were like, you know, what I'm saying, trying to keep my head held high and stuff like that. Man, you gonna get out? Just stay patient, stay positive about it. You know what I mean? And then. Uh, one day, my um, coach for the uh, sideline cancer, uh, the team that I play on in the summertime for the TBT, he called me up and was like, you still out there? I, he was, I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm still here. He was like, don't even worry about it. We going, I'm, I, I got a guy. He's a, a Green Beret. He's going to he's gonna call you. And when he calls you and texts you, make sure you answer. And he's going to kind of figure out ways of you getting home and stuff like that. But you're going to get home. And so, you know, I was excited about that. It was some days where they had plans for me and we thought it was going to work. Some days it right. didn't work, but right. it was the, it was the day that I got out. I was like, man, I'm just so happy that I'm out of here. And I was heading to the Moldavian border. Like they had made a plan like um, to basically grab like a boat or a car, but uh, my assistant coach's wife and daughter, I mean, wife and uh, sister was already, um, going to the Moldavian border. So what I did was I just rode in there with them, went to the Moldavian border. Um, when we got there, I thought it was going to be a quick process, but it wasn't. It was nine hours long. And I was sitting out there with three bags for nine hours and just trying to get through the gates and stuff like that. And, um, you know, my driver was out there at 7 o'clock p.m. I'm th I'm, I don't think I got in that car until – shoot like one in the morning and I got there at four. Like you know Man. what I'm saying? And it was just, it was that bad. And um I don't know what the problem was with that, but you know, at the end of the day, um I learned a lot from that experience. You know what I'm saying? I went to uh Romania after that. Um I had played in Romania the year before 
Yeah. So I already knew where I was going to. I knew I was going to be safe and sound. I knew every spot, every food spot, everything about Romania. And I like it there. I like it there. Right. So um, right. I stayed right. there for two days. And then, you know, they paid for my hotel. They paid for my flights, everything. So they paid for my flights to get home, all of that. Um, okay. And, you know, I can't thank them enough. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say it was no nobody over in Ukraine that was trying to help me because it definitely was. Like, uh, my Americanized coach, his name is Coach Terry, he made sure that every time that siren went off, he picked me up from my apartment, got me back to uh, his apartment where the bomb shelter was to make sure that I was safe and sound. The head coach of uh, Nick Live, he was making sure that I had food, making sure that I had groceries and stuff like that, just trying to make sure I was safe. Um, and the other assistant coach that started off as my head coach, um, he, you know what I'm saying, I could have still been there when his sister and, you know what I'm saying, his wife was getting out, but they knew I was here, so they just had me ride along with them. So it was people that were there that was helping me, but it was supposed to come from the highest man, the higher up man, the Absolutely. man that's paying my checks, the man right. that made, you know what I'm saying, had the final say so for me even coming here in the first place. I right. have that to this day to hear from him. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So when you have when you're in a, a situation like that, when you're in a situation like that, uh you just Kim. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a situation like that, man. You just gotta understand, like, it's tough. It's really tough. Absolutely, man. Man, you definitely got to, man. I know you got some you got a book coming out or something, man. You got you got you got a the story, man. It definitely gotta be told, man. So you working on anything? Yeah, man. So I'm definitely going to write a book about it. Um, definitely trying to tell my whole story. I've yet to tell everybody everything, man, because there's so much that goes into it. Right. Um, but um, definitely want to write a book about it someday. Yeah, definitely, man. How can people follow you, man? Keep in touch with you, man. Show their support for you, man. Where can they, where can they follow you at? Man, I've got Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Mo Creek Twenty One. Uh, my Facebook, you can uh, catch it on my, you know, my real name, Maurice Creek, and it'll pop up. And my Twitter is uh, Mo underscore Creek, and that's where you know, I say a lot of information goes out at. So, if y'all wanna uh, holler at me, man, just go ahead and do it on the, uh, you know, say one of the social sites or whatever. And I'm, I'm always on it, so I see everything. I definitely appreciate your time, man. I'm glad you're home, bro, man. A lot of us was back here rooting for you to get home, man, because especially us athletes, man, because we can we know that experience, man, what it can be like being over there by yourself, man. So thank God you're home, man, it's safe and sound. Thank everybody for joining the, uh, the Crossover Talk Show with your host, Travis Garrison, professional basketball player, Maurice Creek. If you're a student athlete and you want to come on the show, you know a student athlete, definitely go to the crossovertalkshow.com. Uh, always remember to think first, not think about how your actions can affect now, but how it can affect your future and how it can affect those around you. And if you want to be a guest on the show or you know somebody that needs to be a guest on the show, go to the crossovertalkshow.com. Hello, my name is Walla Blagay, and I am running to be the District 6 representative on the Prince George's County Council. District 6 is our home. We value the strength of our neighbors and our community. We treasure the surrounding green space that provides us the opportunity to enjoy quality time with our family and friends. <laughs> we encourage economic growth by starting and supporting local and small businesses. And we want to continue to spend our dollars in our community. But we know we need more. We need better quality restaurants, retail options, and grocery stores. Stores that provide the quality products that reflect the diverse needs of our residents. Our county has a vision for several economic development projects, such as Downtown Largo and the Hampton Mall Project. That growth must include all of District 6. This type of growth not only provides opportunities for entrepreneurs, but also growth in our workforce, development, and training, and supports a commuter-friendly county. 
I want us to have the District 6 we deserve, and that's why I'm ready to work for you. Visit my website at wallenblagate.com to learn more about what we can do together